Hey guys, it's Mrs. Olenichek, and today we're going to start talking about genetics. Um, we're going to cover some of the basic vocabulary and how to perform simple uh, Punnett squares. Make sure you take notes and write down any questions that you might have, um, and be sure to ask those when you get to class. Um, so like I said, there's a lot of vocabulary in this unit, and if you can master the vocabulary, it just makes everything a little bit easier. So by the end of this lecture, you should have a good understanding of all of the terms listed here, um, and you may want to go back and kind of review those, make sure that you understand them. So let's start off with this idea of traits. So genetics is really the study of how traits, like eye color or blood type, are going to be passed from parents to offspring. Um, we've always noticed that offspring or the babies look a lot like parents and so the question was why is that how are those traits being passed on what determines which traits get passed on and which ones don't um, some of the traits we can look at um, are things like tongue rolling dimples cleft chin hair color or texture all of those are genetic traits that can be passed down um, in your genes so genes are on chromosomes. So chromosomes contain multiple genes, um, and a gene is just a segment of DNA that codes for a protein which determines a trait. So different proteins carry out different roles that result in visible traits. So now remember meiosis? We just talked about meiosis, um, and so that was the process of producing gametes, and those were going to be um, sex cells, so used for reproduction, um, and they're going to contain half the chromosome number. And meiosis was important because it was a way of mixing up the chromosomes and producing gametes that only had half the normal chromosome number. Um, so you'll see why this is important as we go further on in genetics. Um, but this process provides gametes with half the chromosome number that are used to create new organisms, but also gametes that are different from each other. So you get variation in the population. This is why you and your brothers and sisters are not necessarily identical to each other. You're all going to be slightly different because you have different gene combinations, even though you have the same parents. So Gregor Mendel was a monk um, who was one of the first to really talk about inheritance of traits, and he came up with a lot of these um, kind of rules for inheritance. Um, he's sometimes called the father of modern genetics. Um, and one of the principles or rules that he came up with was this idea of independent assortment, um, which says that inheritance of one trait has no effect on the inheritance of another trait. Um, now, this isn't always true, but it's a good place to start. So we can look at patterns that we see in some traits, and then when things don't fit that pattern, we could try to figure out why. Um, so we're going to start simple, and then we'll look at some of the more complicated inheritance patterns. So again, this idea of independent assortment means that genes for different traits are going to be inherited separately from each other. Um, and this helps us predict the outcome of genetic crosses, and it also explains a lot of the diversity we see. Um, segregation is another one of those principles that he talked about, and it was that idea that when gametes are formed, traits found on different chromosomes separate from each other into the gametes. Um, so you get all of those chromosomes separating, and you only get one of the pair. When we talk about pairs, we're talking about homologous pairs of chromosomes. So homologous pairs are chromosomes that contain the same genes, but not necessarily the same versions of genes. Um, and we'll get into what that means here in a second. Um, but it's good to remember that genes are going to come in pairs. So for every trait or every protein that you make, you actually have two copies of the instructions for making that protein. One of those copies you got from mom and one you got from dad. Um, it may be useful to think of them, genes kind of like your shoes. You need both shoes to leave the house. Um, the shoes usually will accomplish the same task, um, but they're not exactly the same. They're not identical to each other. 
Um, so homologous pairs, matching genes, you get one from mom and one from dad. Um, so for example, if you have 46 chromosomes, that's 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes. You got 23 from dad in the sperm and 23 from mom that were present in the egg cell. Altogether, when those came together during fertilization, you have 46 chromosomes, which gives you a complete set. So if you look at one pair of homologous chromosomes and you look at the genes contained on it, there's multiple genes on any one chromosome, but let's imagine that this particular chromosome has a gene for eye color. Mom may have given you the, the gene or the allele, the version that, set, that codes for the protein that gives you blue eyes, and dad may have given you the version of that gene that codes for brown eyes. Those versions, we're going to call those alleles. So an allele is a version of a gene for the same trait. So in this example, we have blue eyes and brown eyes. They're both eye color genes. Um, they're just different versions of the gene. You could also think of this like ice cream flavors. So they're different flavors of a gene. When we look at alleles, we often talk about them being dominant or recessive. So if one allele prevents the other from showing, so one version of the gene prevents the other version of the gene from showing, we say that it's dominant. When allele does not show unless both are the same, we say that it's recessive. So if the allele or the version is dominant, we represent that with an uppercase letter. So in this example, we have T. Um, and if it's recessive, we use a lowercase letter, lowercase T. So if we look at this litter of puppies, you see the two black puppies. They contain, they're showing the dominant trait, and then the white one has the recessive trait. Another example would be hitchhiker's thumb. So if you put your thumb out, give, give yourself a thumbs up, take a look at your thumb. If it bends back, that's said to be hitchhiker's thumb. Um, if it stays straight, that's just a straight thumb. Um, so you can imagine if we say that straight is dominant to hitchhikers, straight would be represented with a capital T, hitchhikers would be lowercase t. Um, we always use the same letter for the same allele, so we're not going to put an S and an H because that would just get confusing. And I would always write out the key. It just makes your life easy. You're less likely to make mistakes. Um, you also want to make sure that your capital and lowercase look different from each other. So if you have a straight thumb, you could have two versions of the allele for straight thumb. Or you could also have one allele that says straight and the other one that codes for hitchhiker's thumb. Because straight is dominant, if you have at least one version of that, you're going to have a straight thumb. The only way you'll get a hitchhiker's thumb is if both alleles are going to be little t. So if both of the genes or both of the alleles that you have for that gene for thumb shape um, code for hitchhikers, then you will have hitchhiker's thumb. Basically, you need two recessive alleles for that trait to show. So here we come to our, back to those puppies. They're all grown up. You can see that the ones that were black could have either had two alleles for black fur or one allele for black fur and one allele for white fur. The only way you'd get the white is if you had two alleles for white. Now, if they have two big Bs or two dominant or two recessive, we say that they're homozygous or purebred. So both this big B, big B and this little B, little B would be called homozygous or purebred. If it's big T, big T or big B, big B, we call it homozygous dominant. If it's little T, little T or little B, little B we call it homozygous recessive. So homo meaning same. If you have one dominant and one recessive allele, then we say that it's heterozygous. So hetero for other. Um, another term you see sometimes used is hybrid. 
And so big T, little T would be heterozygous, or if we're looking at the puppy, big B, little B. So now we get to some different vocabulary. So we have genotype and phenotype. So genotype is talking about your genes. Phenotype is talking about your physical appearance. So when you think about the genes, those are what's on the inside. When you think about the phenotype, that's going to be what you see, what's physically expressed. So here you go. Combination of genes. The actual genes are the genotype. So that would be the big T, big T, big T, little T, little T, little T. And then the physical appearance, that's going to be the phenotype. So what's going to be expressed at the end? What do they look like? Hitchhiker's thumb or straight thumb. So all of this becomes really useful. All this vocabulary is necessary when you start thinking about probabilities and offspring. Um, basically what you're going to get are a bunch of word problems or riddles that you're going to try to solve based on the information that you have. And we use something called a Punnett square to predict the possible makeup of offspring. Now this is just giving a probability of getting those combinations. So if we know that black fur is dominant to white fur in mice, and we cross a heterozygous male with a homozygous recessive female, so a heterozygous male has one allele for black fur and one allele for white fur, and then mom being homozygous recessive, she has two of the same, and they're both recessive, so they're both for white. Um, so the genotype here would be big B, little b, heterozygous. The phenotype, if black is dominant to white, would be black. Here, the genotype is little b, little b, and then the phenotype would be white. So if I want to know what is the possible combination of genes and then phenotypes or appearance in offspring, I can set up this thing called a Punnett square. So first I determine what the parents have. So dad was heterozygous, mom was homozygous recessive. And then I'm going to put those around my Punnett square. So dad can only give one version either the big B or the little b to the offspring because he's only giving half of his chromosomes. Same with mom. She can only give one allele. So since she has two that are the same, she's going to be giving little b or little b. Then you combine those in the squares. So if dad gave a big B and mom gave that little b, the offspring would be headers, I guess, with big B, little b. You do the same here, here, and here. So these are all the possible combinations of alleles that you could see in the offspring. So based on this, I would have two that were heterozygous and two that were homozygous, or 50% heterozygous, 50% homozygous recessive. That would be the genotypes. If I want to know the phenotypes or the phenotypic ratio, that would be two black to two white, or 50% of the offspring should be black and 50% should be white. Now, you don't always get a per that ratio if you only had two offspring. Each of them will always have the same probability of getting that combination. Um, and we'll talk more about that later. So let's try this one. So if we're going to cross two hybrid mice, hybrid is the same as saying heterozygous. So that's big B, little b, and big B, little b. Take a second and try to fill in your Punnett square. So pause me, try to fill in your Punnett square. Okay, so we should have big B or little b from one parent and big B or little b from the other parent. Now you're going to combine those. So again, pause me for a second and try to fill that in your Punnett square. So here we have all the possible combinations of alleles. So you could get the big B and big B, big B, little b, big B, little b, or little b, little b. So here the genotypic ratio 
would be one homozygous dominant for every two heterozygous to every one homozygous recessive. The phenotypic ratio would be 75% black offspring and 25% white, or three black to every one white. Here's another example of a practice question. So see if you can figure this one out. A man and a woman, both with brown eyes, marry and have a blue-eyed child. What are the genotypes of the man, woman, and child? Well, we know the child, because if the child has blue eyes, they must be little b, little b. And so the man and the woman must be both heterozygous, because they both have to contribute a little b to the offspring. So this is where it gets kind of like a riddle that you have to solve. Um, so here, if we set up our Punnett square, this is what it should look like. Oops, sorry. And we know that the little b, little b was the offspring. So now you have a few more practice questions on your handout. I'd like you to try to solve those on your own. Um, and then when you come to class, we'll do a bunch of practice together. Um, remember, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Um, and we'll go over this next time.